Hello everybody, welcome to One More Night. Welcome to Victory Every Night now because since we're going to be on for the next few days, uh, for the next 21 days, now 20 now because this is day two, this is night two, so we're so happy to be here, to be together. God is doing great things. Yesterday we had an amazing night. I'm just looking at my phone because I'm getting messages already. So I want to invite you in. Let me know if you're you're you you're connected. Let me know if you're everything is good, audio is good, because we're gonna have another great night tonight in Jesus' name. God is so good, Amen. Praise God. It's victory every night now. I you know it's it feels weird because every time I go on from here. I, I, I have a tendency that I to say, welcome to Victory Thursday, but now it's victory every night. Praise God. We're, st we're starting this new year strong, starting in faith. God is so good. All is well, and we win all the time. I want to welcome you in. I want to invite you, invite you to this great meeting. Yesterday, again, was powerful. We had a great time. If you're here last night, just give me a high five there in the comments. Um, we had a great time. God did some great things. People got saved yesterday. We got some messages, what God is doing, and this is just the beginning. Praise God. This is just the beginning. I'm hearing messages. I, I heard testimonies now of, of God blessing people financially, uh, supernatural amounts showing up in their bank accounts. Come on, somebody. That's good news. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And they check everything is said. Everything is good. Everything is right. We just don't know where it's coming from. Favor. When you give to God, when you put your faith in God, when you trust God with everything, that's the consequence. That's what happens. Amen. So tonight's going to be a great night again in Jesus' name. Let's just welcome the presence of God into this room, into this place, into this meeting. Father, we praise you tonight. We worship you. We honor you. Father, we lift your name high. There's no other God like you, Father. We're so grateful for the opportunity you have given us to be your children. Father, we praise you for this great year of victory. We praise you for this victory night. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you and we bless this country. Father, this, this beautiful land of the free that you have placed us on, Father, we bless it and we declare favor over this land in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for every person under the sound of my voice that are connecting with us, Father, to receive, to be encouraged, Father. In Jesus' name, I speak victory over their lives. I speak favor in the name of Jesus. I speak healing tonight in the name of Jesus. I declare that no formed weapon will prosper against you or your family in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you know what I'm going to ask you to do? Tag your friends, invite them, uh, share. Let's let's just flood the the the, the, the just flood Facebook here with with uh, with a lot of people tonight. Amen. So let's just get get everybody in tonight. Let's just get everybody in tonight. Let me say hello to our friends that are here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Damien, welcome, Damien. The whole family, Kimberly, Rhonda. Clifford, everybody, love you guys there. Amen. Pam, welcome, Pam. Awesome. Welcome to night two. Night two. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pauline, love you, Pauline. Love you, Mary. Hola, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Love you, Suzanne. Welcome, welcome, everybody. All of you. I love you, Pam, Kevin, and Adrian. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Patricia, Patricia Inducia Martorina. I'm trying to read your name here. Amen. Praise God. Welcome, Patricia. We welcome you here. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Jorge, my buddy. Amen. And everybody else that are here, we, 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 we honor you. We thank you for, for this time and opportunity. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. I'm going to give you some time to keep on sharing. Invite some friends. Invite some friends. See, I'm doing the same as we speak here. 
I'm doing the same here. I'm, I'm, I'm about to share to my personal page here. Let me do this now so I don't forget. Amen. I have some good things to share with you tonight. And we're going to be blessed. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm going to give you some time to keep on sharing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, if you have a prayer request, write in the comments. Let us know. We want to pray for you. I'm going to be praying for everybody at the end of the broadcast tonight. Hold on a second. My phone is loud here. So, uh, yeah, just let us know if you have any prayer because if you know any a, a prayer request, if you know anybody that anybody that it's in need of, of, of prayer, if it's sick, whatever situation, just contact them right now. Tell them we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray together. And I believe in the prayer of faith. I believe in the power of the word and the, the spoken word. And we're gonna speak victory over you, speak victory over your family today. So call your friends right now. Just tell them, hey man. Pastor PJ is going to pray, uh, and the whole the whole team is going to be connected and pray in the green for victory. So if you need a miracle, wherever you are, you're in a hospital right now, get them. Tell them. Text them. Go on Facebook right now and watch it. You know, if they're in a different country, doesn't matter. That's how that, that's one of the greatest things about social media, that anybody can watch it from anywhere, especially today. And most of the people have smartphones. So... You can just connect it right now and just be there receiving. And I know God is going to do great things. Amen. We're not here doing this because we don't have anything else to do, because we don't have a busy life, because we're bored. We're doing this because, number one, we want more of God. Number two, we want to bless you. We want to bless your family. We want to bless your business, your finances. We want to bless you in general, in every area of your life. That's God's will for your life. That's what God wants to do in your life. He wants to bless you. God loves you so much that he's raising people. God has raised people like me and many other preachers that are taking time, preparing, spending time and in the presence of God to come into a moment like this and to speak life into your life, speak victory into your life. That's how much God loves you, that he's raising people that are not compromising the word of God that are taking a stand in such a time as this, in a very critical moment, in a very critical age, a very critical time of our nation, of the world, yet we take time to hear God and speak into your life. That's how much God loves you. And I would encourage you right now, give that God praise right now. Honor Him right now. Open your heart for Him right now and speak from your mouth a word of gratitude because He loves you. He sent his son, but he didn't stop there. He keep on raising men and women of God to keep on declaring his word, to keep on speaking his word over you and protecting you and covering you, you know, and that's how amazing our God is. Amen. I just get over overwhelmed and I get I get excited when I think about it. When I think about it, that's how great my father is, my God is. Amen. So, friends, I just want to tell you this. Uh, we're going to pray, and as we pray to start this, this service tonight, uh, I also want to pray for our nation. Our nation is a, in a very critical time, in a very critical moment, and I believe it's time for us to pray. It's time for us to get together. It's time for us to stand for our nation, speak life, speak victory, speak freedom, over our nation and I want to encourage you right now to pray with me but before we pray before we pray I want to I want to read something I want to read something from the Word of God if you have your Bibles open with me open you open with me 
in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. We read yesterday verse 2. And we're going to read it again. Look what, look what Daniel says here in verse 2. I'm reading from the NIV version. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned or fastened for three weeks. I ate no choice of food. No meat or wine touched my lips. I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. So Daniel took a 21-day fasting and prayer to be in the presence of God, and as he was doing that, God spoke to him. God gave him prophetic visions. God gave him prophetic words. So that's the importance of, of our fasting. The reason why we're fasting is because it's not because we ate too much for holidays and now we want to lose weight. No, the reason why we're fasting is because we want more of the presence of God. Especially now in this time and age, there are so many, there's, there are so many question marks all over the world. Not just in our country. People don't know what's going to happen. People don't know who's going to be the president. People don't know a lot of things. And, and that's why you need to take this time to focus on hearing God and God only. Because there are a lot of informations out there. There are a lot of wrong information, fake news out there. And we need to take time to listen to God and see what God is saying. Not just for the nation, but for us. Our personal uh, uh, enrichment, our, po our our personal growth. And that's why I think it's so important that we're taking the first few days of the year to be in the presence of God, to focus, to disconnect. I was talking to somebody today and I said, I have no idea what's going on in our country right now in terms of information. I don't know what happened today. I don't know what happened yesterday. I haven't seen anything. I'm so focused on what God has put in my heart. I'm so focused on what God is doing right now and told me to do that I have watched the news. I haven't watched any any regular TV. I haven't watched, I haven't read anything on Twitter. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm focused in the presence of God. All I want to hear is God's voice. All I want to hear what God is saying right now. And that's why it's so important that we see this principle from Daniel that he took to 21 days and God spoke to him. 21 days and God spoke to him. But look at this. Look at this. Verse 7. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My, my face turned uh, Delphi, Del Delphi Pell, and I was helpless. I want you to see this. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. All those people that were with me did not see it. But such a terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. You know what I see here? This is 2020, 2021, modern day Christianity. You know why? You know why? Only Daniel saw the vision because he was the only one prepared. He was the only one focused. The Bible does not tell us that these people were also fasting and praying just like Daniel was. Daniel was the one praying. Daniel was the one praying. Daniel was the one fasting. And God gave him the vision. The other people saw that something was happening, but they couldn't understand. They couldn't see. And what happened? They got in fear. That's modern day Christianity. Today, people, they don't want to spend time with God. They think that fasting is, is, the, is the law, that we need to fast. We don't need to speak in tongues. We don't need to pray in the spirit. We don't need to take a stand. We don't need to spend time in the word because that's work of the law. You know, it, 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 we live by grace. We live by grace. We live by grace. I'm a grace preacher. I can say this. I, can, I have one of the best 
grace teachers of that this world could see, which was Dave DeMola. And I'm bold to say it because his messages are still out there on YouTube. You can watch it and know for yourself if you've never heard the man before. You know, so I had an incredible teacher that, that taught me and, and, and also the Holy Spirit that gave me revelation. But I understand that we cannot go to extremes. The fact that we are under the covenant of grace, you know, the fact that we need to spend time with the Lord and do some things to disconnect and, and focus and prepare ourselves spiritually through fasting those things don't go in the dumpster we don't waste them we don't throw them away those are the things that have brought us here to to and and to help us understand now the revelation of grace that what jesus has done for us but we still need to focus if i i read it yesterday i showed you yesterday if jesus himself if Jesus himself prayed, if Jesus himself took time to, to, to be with God, took time to pray, took time to be in the presence of God, took time to, to fast, who am I, who are you to say we don't need to do it? If the apostle Paul did that, if all the other apostles did that as well, under the new covenant, who am I, who are you to say we don't need to do this? So then you're dead, but the people that didn't were horrified, were in fear. And that's exactly what we see today. People that are not praying, people that are not in the Word, people that are not connected, people that are not disconnecting themselves from the world to spend time with God right now are in fear. How many Christians you know that don't go to church right now? How many Christians that you know right now that they say, Oh my God, we don't know what's going to happen. How many Christians that call themselves fake people haven't seen their family members for six months, my God, my God, talk to me right now. How many Christians, how many Christians today that call themselves fake people haven't been to a church, to a church service, service in nine months? Are you serious right now? You know why? Because you're too busy with everything else and not fasting not praying, not spending time with God. And I want to announce this. You know what? I was not going to say this. I was, I was going to wait until the end of, 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 of this campaign to share this with you. But the Lord put in my heart. And we're doing for the first time. This is the first time that as a ministry, we're doing this fasting. But I have already announced that we're going to do this every year from now on. But we're not going to stop at 21 days for the year. We're going to do 40 days a year. We're going to fast for 40 days every year our ministry is going to do. We're going to do the first, we're going to do 21 days in the beginning of the year, January, the first week of January. We're going to, and three months later, we're going to do another seven days. And then three months later, we're going to do another seven days. And then towards the end of the year, we're going to do another five days. We're going to fast 40 days, do a 40 day fasting and prayer every year every year that's how this ministry is going to be that's how we're going to do from now on that's what the lord put in my heart because more than ever we need to be closer to the spirit of god i'm not talking about that he's distant he's in you but i'm talking about sensitivity being connected in the same vision in the same in the same spirit allowing him to speak to you hearing god's voice and that's what's going to happen in this church starting now, starting now. So, you know, I was going to wait for the end of the, the, the 21 days to announce. I'm announcing now. So let me know if you're enjoying this. Let me know if you're going to be with us. Let me know if, 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 if you're with, if the Holy Spirit is witnessing this in your heart so we can join strength together because I believe in Jesus name 2021 is going to be an incredible year if we make our spiritual life an incredible year if we make of our spiritual growth an incredible growth if we spend time with God like never before we spend time in the word like never before let me tell you something for the last two days for the last two days I haven't had a break for nothing I was talking to to Bob earlier I said Bob from yesterday, from 7 a.m. until 10.30 p.m., I didn't stop for five minutes. I didn't have a chance to stop. Today, from 8 in the morning until now, I haven't stopped for a minute. You know, by the way, um, I was supposed to be live on TCT this afternoon. They had a technical problem, 
and we couldn't go live, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but the the 15 minutes into the into four o'clock, which were the time we were supposed to be live, they finally fixed it. So what happened is they play a different show from a different day, and we record it anyway. So it's gonna be here. That show is gonna be here maybe tomorrow or the next day. They're gonna let me know, and as soon as they let me know, I'm gonna let everybody know. But it's okay because next week I'm gonna be on again. Again, I told you that this is gonna be every Tuesday and sometimes some other days when they ask me to do it as well to cover some other pastors. So if you didn't see me, that's the reason why we promoted, we talked about it, we announced it for a few days already, but that's what happened. They had a technical problem on their end and we couldn't be on. But I I was on with them from 3 o'clock until 5.30. 3 o'clock live with them from 3 o'clock until 5.30. I'm telling you, I'm so focused on being in the presence of God. I'm so focused on getting more, more from the Lord that I, I, I don't have time for anything else right now. I don't have time for anything else right now. And that's what I want to encourage, uh, 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 encourage you with today. To make of your spiritual growth an incredible growth where there's no other way but for you to have an incredible 2021 because the word is going to manifest in your life like never seen before. What your ears haven't heard, what your eyes haven't seen, that's what's going to happen to you in this new year in Jesus' name if we make a commitment to God as well as God is committed to us. If we make a commitment to grow in the word of God. I'm, I'm telling you, church, Um, I I hope you're getting my heart because my focus here, what I'm saying to you is about our growth in the word, spending time with God. You see, and anybody that thinks that this is too much, they need prayer. They need help. Anybody that thinks that this is, that spending time with God is a law, you have major problem, my friend. If you think that spending time with the Holy Spirit it's too much, you have to you have to check your Christianity. You'd have to check your salvation. It's almost as, as if I say, I married my wife because I love her so much, but I you know I just want to see you once a week. Oh God, help us all. Come on, talk to me a little bit. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee for this one. Come on, are you tagging your friends and sharing? Hey, Ellen. Hi, Kathy. You get this? Saying that spending time with the law, with the Lord, is too much. Reading the Bible, joining us live every night, it's too much. It's too much. Oh, that's too much. Going to a church service on a Sunday morning, that a service that lasts more than two hours. Oh, it's too much. We had people that came to our church once and visited. And that day, I didn't plan on it, but I preached for like an hour and 30 minutes. Service was long. And that person after service said, you know, I like your service, but, you know, it's too long for me. My service, one hour. The church I go to, one hour, one hour. It's too long for me. I said, we're not the church for you. You know, how can I say I love God, but I go to church once a week for one hour and I expect to see victory in my life? Are you serious right now? You spend more time watching the movie than you spend in the presence of God. And, and you watch multiple movies and shows a week. Come on, somebody. It's time for us to wake up. That's why these people here with Daniel, they they when they saw something happen with Daniel, that a move of God was coming, that, that a vision was coming to Daniel, they all got terrified. Yeah, you know why? Because when you're not connected with God, you don't understand God's things. You don't understand God's ways. You don't understand the move of God. And then you get you get you get in fear because you don't know what God is doing. You're not close to him. 
I'm not saying you're not going to heaven, but you're completely disconnected from God's move, from what God is doing, from the move of the Spirit of God. And let me tell you something. That's never going to be our church. That's not going to be me. You want to be around me? You're going to be in the middle of the move of God because I don't want to be just another one. I'm not going to be just another pastor. I'm not going to be just a pastor of another church. We are here to make a difference. That's why the name of the church is Marked. Ephesians 1.13, when you receive Jesus, you are marked by the Holy Spirit. This church is marked by the Holy Spirit, and we have a distinguished faith. We have a marked faith, and we're not just going to be another one. We're going to set the difference. My generation will hear from God, will be touched by the power of God. If that's not what's going to happen through me, goodbye. The Lord's going to take me, and I know he's not going to take me. I know he's not going to take me because I have a lot of things to accomplish. I have a lot of things to accomplish. God brought me to this country. God raised me in this country, even though I was born in a different country, to be a prophetic word to this generation here in America and to the world. I know that from a fact. Not better than anybody one, than anybody else, but I know that in my heart that God brought me to this country with all my imperfection, with all my flawless, without my imperfect English. My English is not perfect. I make mistakes. I have an accent. Who cares? I don't care because God called me and every time the Lord gets on me and the anointing gets on me I'm going to speak wrong I'm going to speak right whatever I need to do but the word is going to get through you the word is going to get through you and it's going to do what it needs to be done it's going to accomplish what was sent for in Jesus name yeah I'm not perfect but God never called anybody perfect God called people that were willing that were that wanted to be vessels so God can use them as, as channels to, to touch and, 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 and bless his people. And that's why I said, here I am, Lord. And that's why you need to do just like Moses did. We read this yesterday. Moses, when he heard the voice of God, Moses, Moses, he said, here I am. God is, that's what God is expecting from you in these 21 days. To see, to say, here I am, Lord, use me. Touch me. Speak to me. Speak through me, Lord. Whatever you want to do. I don't have what it takes, but I have you. And the Holy Spirit's going to enable me. The anointing is going to empower me. Just like Mary. Let it be done unto me according to your word. Let it be done unto me. And the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you're going to move with power. The surge. The surge. The anointed. The boom is going to take place. And do things in your life that in the natural, you could never get it done. Come on, somebody. Speak to me right now. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing right now. I feel the anointing. Let's take a praise break right now. Just take a praise break and put your hands up wherever you are right now and start praising God in Jesus' name. And open your mouth and let Him fill you. Let Him fill your mouth with glory tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Daniel was the only one who saw the vision. Why? Because he was fasting. Because he was praying. Because he was connected. He was ready. He was ready. Attentive. time for the Christians, for believers, to take a stand. To take a stand. Let your voice be heard. Let the anointing speak through you. Come on, somebody. Verse Chapter 11, verse 1. And in the first year of Darius the Mede, I took my stand to support and protect him. Daniel was a man... Of character that took a stand that took a stand for the truth in the first year of Darius the Mead I took my stand to support and protect him the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is because the Christians people that are filled of the, that are that are filled with the Holy Spirit 
filled with the anointing and the fire of God. You need to take a stand for your country. The land that you live in. I'm saying this because we need to pray for our nation. We need to pay for, pray for the revival that God is sending into our nation. And that revival started already. There is a revival going on. I'm telling you. There is a revival going on in our nation. And we need to take a stand for our nation. This man was a bold man. Every person that takes time to pray. That takes time to spend in the word. That takes time to fast. Is a bold person. You're not afraid. Remember what Aster, we read yesterday, Aster, the, 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 the queen, look what she said. I'm going to read it to you again. Aster 4.16, go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to go see the king. They're telling me I'm not allowed to. I'm going to fast first. I'm going to pray first. I'm going to spend time with God first. And I'm going to go, even though they're telling me I'm not allowed to. If I must die, I must die. If I perish, I perish. You see, every person that spends time with God in the Word, that spends time praying, that, that person is a bold person. It's not afraid of anything. Threats of the devil, government, whatever it is. And every person that said, if I, if I must die, I die, they don't die. They don't die. You know why? Because God comes on their behalf to rescue them. Are you with me, church? Are you with me, somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the anointing is so strong. The anointing is so strong. So we need to pray for our nation. We need to take a stand for our nation. You know what? I'm going to do something that I... I'm doing this very relaxing. I told my wife, we're going to do this very relaxing. We're not going to be so full of structure. And we're going to go back to the Word. But the Lord put this in my heart uh, for, for, for this next 21 days. The Lord put this in my heart for the next 21 days to... To declare the declaration, the 10 declarations of faith for the new year of 2021. Put it right here for you to see it. The Lord put in my heart for so to every night to declare this over you. So I didn't do it in the beginning. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now because I don't want to forget. And this is part of what I'm going to do right now. So 10 declarations uh, of faith for 2021. You know what? As I speak this, put your hand in your heart. And every time I say one, say amen, I receive it. Okay? 2021 will be the best year of my life. I am blessed going in and I will be, be, be even more blessed going out. My family is blessed. My business and finances will be the best ever. I walk in divine favor. The favor of God produces opportunities for me to prosper and increase. I walk in divine health. Sickness, disease, plagues. Sickness, disease, plagues have no place in my life. I live under the shadow of the Almighty. No formed weapon can prosper against me. My life is not controlled by what happens in the world because God is my source of life. I do not live in fear. I live by faith. If God is for me, who can be against me? I am a winner. Amen. Hallelujah. Say amen, that is me, and I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. So friends, I know all of you have seen this video that it's gone, it's gone viral about this reverend, this minister from a Methodist church that prayed at the House of Democrats. And uh, the House of Democrats, and, and he, he finished this prayer by saying amen and a woman. It's just so stupid. But at the same time that we think it's stupid, they know what they're doing, those people. And we are focused on the fact that he said amen in a woman, but we're not listening to what he said right before that. A lot of people have missed that. A lot of people have missed what he said 
just before, a few seconds before in that prayer. And I'm going to quote that. I'm going to quote that to you right now. I want you to listen to this. Watch. This is a, th- these were his final words before he said amen and a woman. He said, we pray in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, God known by many names, by many different faiths. Amen and a woman. We pray in the name of the of monotheistic God, monotheistic, I think, monotheistic God, monotheistic God, Brahma. You know who that Brahma is? That's a Hindu God. And that's a minister. Monotheistic God is a universal God. That's the name of God that they're quoting in this nation. That they're speaking and declaring and praying over this nation. Monotheistic God. That is not the God of America. That is not the God of this nation. That is not the God of this nation. And that's why you need to take a stand, a stand because I'm just showing to you, I don't care who you voted for. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just showing to you what they're trying to do to this nation. A nation that was founded in Christianity, in the Bible, in the name of Jesus we pray. And God we trust, the God of the Bible, the God of Israel. And now they're trying to unify the the God of Israel, our Savior, to any other God. Any other God that has no power to heal, no power to save. That can even speak for themselves. And we cannot allow this nonsense, idiocy, disgrace to take place under our noses, before our eyes, and say nothing. We may not have the control. We may not have the power to go there and fix something in the natural with our own hands. But we have, let me show you, our knees. We have our words. We have our mouth. We have... The power of the spoken word. And we can raise a prophetic voice over this nation. And rebuke this demonic. This demonic assignment. To destroy this nation. I don't care who you voted for. It's not about that. It's not about that anymore. This is about our nation. Our freedom. How would you feel if somebody get into your house and just say, from now on, this is how it's going to happen. Oh, I don't, oh, you're not serving this God? Throw your Bibles away? How would you feel? You say, no, not in my house. That's what's happening in our nation. Our nation is our house. Our nation is the backyard of our homes. That's why we need to take a stand. We can't just allow, we can just think that, you know, inside of your four walls, you control, but outside, you know, whatever it is, it is. No, 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 that's not how it happens. That's not how it happens, because if you're allowed to happen anything on the outside of the four walls of your home, trust me, they're going to come in and do whatever they want inside of the four walls too, and you will have no say. That's why we need to take a stand and pray. And right now, we're going to take a break and we're going to go back to the Word. We're going to pray for our nation because our nation needs prayer right now. And the Lord's telling me, don't wait until the end of the service. Pray now. We're going to pray right now. So just put your hands towards mine right now, towards the screen, and agree with me in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we come together in agreement for protection over our nation. Father, we speak over this land. We speak over our president. We speak, Father, over that the 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 the, the congressman and and and, and woman and, and the Senate over this nation. Father, that we we speak over every every leader right now. Those father that have a demonic agenda, Father, let them be exposed. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak over this nation and we take a stand as citizens, Father, of this country. We take a stand, Father, as Americans, as, as even just people living here. Even if we're not American, if you're not born here, you live in this country, you have the right to speak in Jesus' name and declare freedom. Because that's what attracts you to this country, the prosperity and the freedom of this country. So together, we agree for a turnaround in Jesus' name over our nation. We bless this nation in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back to the word here. Daniel chapter 10. We're still in Daniel chapter 10. I want to encourage you. I'll tell, tell you this. Since yesterday, day one, when we started this fasting, everything that you're believing God for, everything that you're standing in faith for, God has already released on your behalf. Can you say amen with me? And I'm going to prove that to you. Everything that you're believing God for is standing in faith, and you have declared and released your faith through prayer since day one of this fasting. God has already released your victory. Watch. Watch this. Let's continue on chapter 10. Verse 12 from the New Living Translation says this. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. Since day one, Daniel, since day one, Maria, Ellen, Kathy, Pauline, Pam, Cynthia, PJ, Jorge, Bob, everybody. Since day one, you started praying. Day one, you start this commitment. Watch. To be, you begin to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God. What have we said for this whole time that fasting is all about? Preparation, spiritual preparation to understand and hear God's ways more clearly. To be more sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. To gain understanding. And that's exactly what Daniel was doing. Fasting again. It's not to twist God's arm. You know, I like to say this and make it clear. Because a lot of people think that fasting is to change uh, 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 God's will. You know, things are not happening and I'm going to get on fasting and prayer. I'm going to lock myself in this room and God is going to make it happen. That's hunger strike. That's not fasting. You know, the, the role model for fasting is our Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he didn't go to fast. Be, he didn't go fasting in the wilderness for 40 days because he needed a new house, a new car. Because he was believing God for healing. He went to prepare himself. He went to prepare himself. And that's exactly what Daniel was doing. Since the first day, you began to pray for understanding. Understanding. And humble yourself before God. You know what that means? When you humble yourself by, by, by praying and fasting for understanding and say, Lord, I'm, I'm giving you my whole attention so I can hear from you. That's humbling yourself saying to God, Lord, I depend on your direction. I depend on your guidance. I depend on your control. I depend on your anointing. That is to humble yourself. That's how you humble yourself before God. And look what happened. Your request has been heard in heaven. Immediately. Day one. Somebody rejoice with me. Day one. That's what happened to you. And look what happened. Immediately. I have come in answer to your prayer. There's no such a thing. As, Will God answer? Will God do this? Will God? Do There's no question mark. Remove every question mark right now. There's no 50-50. This is not the gospel casino. You're not trying to get your lucky number here tonight. 21 days, it's not, you know, your lucky number. 
That's not what this is all about. This is about sensitivity, humbling ourselves before God, independence of God. And look what happens. Immediately as you prayed on day one, God has already released angels to come with your answer. But look what happened. But for 21 days, the spirit of Prince of the kingdom of Persia, Persia blocked my way. He's talking about the devil. For 21 days, you see why it took 21 days for him to see the manifestation. Because when we take a stand, when we pray, the devil rises to try to block and stop the angels of God to, from coming to you and releasing your, your victory. That's why we cannot give up. That's why we cannot stop praying. That's why we cannot and we cannot say, "Well, I prayed three days, nothing happened. I, I might as well give up." Oh, I pray, I pray for twenty-five days and nothing happened. And here's the thing, too: twenty-one days. It's not a formula. It's not a formula. That's ex that's what happened to Daniel, but that does not mean that's exactly what happened to you. Let me tell you: maybe for you, only going to take three days. Maybe for you only going to take one day. Maybe for you it's going to take 30 days, 5 days, 10 days. It doesn't really matter. You keep on standing. You keep on praying. You keep on taking a position until you see the manifestation. Because you know God has already released your answer. God has already released your victory. But the devil is trying to block you. That's why you keep on speaking the word. That's why you keep on declaring the, the, the reading word. Just like Jesus said in the wilderness in Luke chapter 4. Every time the devil tried to, to stop him and block him and defeat him, he said, it is written. It is written. It is written. And that's how you defeat the word, the devil, through the word. Jesus left that as an example, as a model for us to understand. You don't need superpower. You need the word. Speak the word. That's how you defeat the devil. And every time Jesus said, it is written, it is written, he stopped the devil from destroying him. He stopped the devil. He blocked the devil from destroying him. And that's how we're going to block the devil. We're going to destroy the devil and, and, and release the angel that it's coming to release our victory. Our answer. For 21 days, the spirit, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, look at this. If it's necessary, God is going to send the chief of angels, <laughs> come on somebody, then Michael, one of the archangels, not just an angel, now it's an archangel, it's another, it's another level higher, came to help me, and, le and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. You see? The answer was released in the first day. Day number one, night number one, night number one. Immediately, 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 immediately. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. This got to bring joy to you. This got to bring excitement to you. If you don't get excited with this, we got to pray for you. We got to do a spiritual CPR on you. You see, since the first day, I told you, don't pray for the rest of the 20 days we have left. Do not pray for God to do something that you already prayed for. Just pray in thanksgiving. Just pray in victory, celebration. Father, I know. Father, I know. Father, I thank you because you did this, because you said this in your word. You know that I don't pray. My personal prayers, I don't pray in the future. I pray in the past tense. Yeah, I don't pray for God to do it. I thank God for because he has already done. I pray according to the word. Father, I don't pray. I don't pray to be healed. I thank God because he made me. He made me already whole. He said that healing is my I am already healed by the stripes of Jesus. So I thank him, Father, thank you because you have already released healing for my body at the cross. So I thank you because I am healed. I take hold. I take position of my healing. I don't, I don't pray for protection over my family. 
I don't pray for protection over my family. I thank God because in your word, Father, you said that you're going to give charge to your angels to come and protect and surround my family. So I thank you, Father, that my house is surrounded by angels, my family, my son, my wife, my parents, my brothers, my, my, my nephew, my, my sister-in-laws. So they're, they're protected by you, Father. They're surrounded by angels. No formed weapon can attack my house. No, no, no. No formed weapon from the devil will be successful in our family. So I thank you. See, I'm praying in the past. I'm thanking him because he already said he was going to do it. Father, I don't pray for him to, 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 to meet all my needs. I say, Father, thank you because you said in your word that you're going to provide for me and that you're going to meet all my needs, all my needs according to your, your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So I thank you, Father, that all my needs are met. So now, Father, I thank you also for the desires of my heart. Because you said in your word that you're going to give me the desires of my heart. So I know that everything that I desire in my heart is coming my way. So I thank you, Father, in advance. You see how you pray. You pray the word. You know the word. And that's how you pray in the past tense. Thanking God because he has already released your answer. He has already released your victory according to, according to the word of God. According to what we just read. The Bible also says that all his promises are yes and amen. So if he has it already in a yes and amen, why am I going to ask for something that has already in a yes? You only ask for something that you don't know yet if there is a yes or a no attached to it. Can I have it? You ask for it because you don't know if you can or not. But when you know you already have the yes and amen, Father, I thank you because it's mine. Thank you, Father, for providing. Thank you, Father, for your word. Come on, somebody. I'm giving you some good word here now. Are you with me? So let me tell you what happens when you get words like this. Let me tell you what happens in the spiritual realm when we give you prophetic revelations like this. When you take a stand. And I'm doing these things. I'm covering all these areas with you in the first few days because I'm preparing you. I'm preparing you for what's coming. I'm preparing because the devil has his same old tricks and he's going to try to use it against you. And we're, 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 co we're covering all these grounds right now so you can see when the devil is trying to come and you can stop him on his track. Mark chapter 4. Look what happens. Mark chapter 4. Open your Bible there with me if you, if you have your Bibles there. Watch this. Mark chapter 4, I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. Mark 4 verse 13 to verse 20 from the Passion Translation says this. Then he said to them, this is Jesus speaking. If you don't understand this parable, how will you understand any parable? If you don't understand this parable, you're not going to get the word. You're not going to get how... The kingdom functions and works. You're not going to get any other story I tell you. Let me explain. He says. The farmer. The farmer. Sows the word as a seed. Why Jesus is using this analogy. Speaking to farmers. Or using farmers as an example. Because in those days. Most of those men were farmers. They didn't live in a big city like you and I live today. They were farmers, so Jesus was speaking in a way that would be easier for them to understand. The farmer sows the word as seed, and what falls on the beating path represents those who hear the word. But look what happens. But immediately, not later, not at the end of 21 days, not tomorrow, immediately, immediately, Satan appears and snatches from their hearts. Immediately. You see. We're speaking the word. We're declaring over you. We're declaring over your family. Immediately the devil tries. To steal the word from your heart. That's why you have to guard your heart. And guard the word in you. That's why you have to protect this word. That's why you have to be committed to the, the prophetic word God gives you. Because that's what the devil wants. The devil's not after your car, after your money, after your, your job. He's after the word. Because if he gets the word, he can steal everything else from you. If he gets the word from you, you're done. You lose your faith. You lose your hope. In, a, in the program this morning, 
somebody told me, asked me in one of the questions, how you keep, how you keep uh, 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 hope and faith for this new year? How you do this? How you? I said, you spend time in the Word. You spend time with God. How to have faith and hope for the new year? The Word. You keep the Word in your heart. You keep the Word in your mind. You keep the Word in your lips. And you speak and you declare. And the more you speak, the more you declare, the more you're going to believe, the more results you're going to see. So you have to protect the Word. You have to guard your heart. You have to protect the anointing. That's the most a uh, 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 powerful thing that you have in you. The anointing, the presence, the power of God. And you cannot allow anything else to come and choke and suffocate that word. That's why you have to protect it because Satan is after the word. He wants to steal it from your heart. Verse 16, the seed sown on gravel represents those who hear the word and receive joyfully. Ooh, hallelujah. Praise God. What a powerful word. That was good. Did you do you see that word today? Oh my God. Did you receive any? Oh God. That spoke directly to me. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. You see? Sown on a gravel represents those who hear the word and receive it joyfully. But because their hearts, their hearts fell to sink in sink a deep root into the word, they don't endure for long. Do you see? They're happy. They love the word. They love God. But they don't allow the words to go deep enough and create roots in their spirit. So it's easily taken by the devil. That's why we know so many Christians that are up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh, they love God. But no consistency. No consistency. Their hearts fell to sink a deep root into the word. They have no root in the word. You have to be rooted in the word of God. That's why they don't endure for long. They start something, they don't finish. They want to volunteer, they volunteer for three weeks. When they get upset with something, even if it's in the church or outside of the church, they're gone. Why? Not rooted. Not, their roots are shallow. They're not deep enough. Watch, it's not over. It's, it, it, and he says even more. He says, for when trouble or persecution comes on account of the word, they immediately wilt and fall away. Immediately. When they see problems, when they see persecution, oh, pastor, I wanted to volunteer and serve so bad, but then the devil started attacking my dog. The devil started attacking my bird. The devil started attacking my refrigerator, my car. Hey, no, I don't want to serve anymore. That's that kind of people right here. Oh, they love, they receive, they speak in tongues, they love Jesus, but they're not rooted in the word. When they see trouble, persecution, put their mask on. Put their mask on, let's stay home, don't go anywhere. No, 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 you can't do this. No, oh, no, persecution. Oh, they're coming against us. No, 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 we can't, we can't. We have to receive, we have to, we have to obey. We have to obey, we have to obey the government, we have to obey what they're saying, CDC is saying, what, what Fauci is saying, don't go anywhere, don't go, don't do anything, don't visit your family, that's what we got to do, you know, so we, we stay at peace with everybody, we stay at peace with everybody, nobody does anything, nobody upsets anybody, we got to do this. Really? Verse 18, and the seed sown among the thorns represents those who hear the word, but they allow the cares of this life and the seduction of wealth and the desires for other things to crowd out and choke the word so that it produces nothing. Again, we have those that they hear the word, but they allowed distraction, worry, cares of life. Seduction for money. Oh, I gotta make money. You know, you know, I I can't go to church now, Pastor, because I got three jobs now. Because I gotta make sure I get to pay the bills. You know, because with this thing going on, I haven't received my stimulus check yet. You know, so we gotta do this. We gotta do that. We gotta do that. The word. That's what you gotta stick to. The word. The word. Seduction. Of wealth and the desires for other things. Desire many other things but the presence. 
these things, they crowd out and choke the word, so it produces nothing. But now I'm going to talk about you. Verse 20. I'm going to talk about you now. Verse 20. Watch. Verse 20. But the seed sown on good soil. But the seed sown on good soil. Say it now with me. That, that's me right now, Pastor. You're talking to me right now. But the seed sown on good soil represents those who open their hearts to receive the word and their lives bear good fruit. Some eel they harvest of 30, 60, and even 100 times more than was sown. You see this? Their harvest. They, they get a harvest of a 30, 60, and 100 fold. 30, 60, and 100 fold. Why? They're good soil. They're good soil. They're ready to receive the word and they protect the word. They don't allow the devil to come and steal the word. The devil is going to challenge you in these days. The devil is going to challenge you this year. But you keep the word. You protect the word. You don't allow distraction. Things come your way and distract you. And, and tell you don't go to church anymore. Don't commit anymore. Don't give anymore. A lot of people stop giving. A lot of people stop tithing in the, in the house of God. And I'm not talking about our church. I'm talking about the body of Christ in general. Because they're afraid. They're allowing the cares of this world to choke the word. The promises. The, the, the promise of God that he will give it to you. That he will bless you so much. That he will open the windows of heaven. That the only problem you're going to have is where to put your blessings. And then you stop giving. You stop tithing. You stop sowing. You stop, be, you stop becoming a partner with, a, with another ministry that is preaching the gospel. That is supporting other ministries. And because you're so afraid. You're so worried. Don't let that be you. The devil is going to try to challenge you, but you have the answer. That's why I said a few minutes ago that I'm giving you this. That God has directed me to give you this so we can cover all these areas. So when you see the devil trying to bring worry into your hearts, your mind, concerns, fear, you rebuke that devil and you put him back on the track. I said, devil, if you're telling me not to give, I'm going to give even more. If you're telling me not to do it, I'm going to do it even more. If you're telling me to push, to, to, to hold back, I'm going to push forward even more. You're not going to stop me, devil. Listen to me. The devil will never tell you the truth. Never. And every time that you hear, don't give, trust me, it's not God. God will never tell you not to give. Remember that he told a widow. Through Elisha, a widow that, were, that was about to die. Listen, woman, let me tell you something. You want to eat more than this one last meal and die? You want to eat more than one? You want to see your son blessed? You want to have victory in your life? Give to God first. God didn't say, you know, it's okay, honey, you're suffering. You're struggling right now. It's okay. God didn't say that. I, I, I understand that things are a little difficult for you right now. God didn't say that. Give to me first. Can I get amen? Can I get an amen right now? Give to me first. The devil never tell you the truth. Don't serve. Stay home. That's not God. Oh, you're not gonna, you're gonna have a horrible year because things are not easy. You're gonna close down your business. That is not God. That is not God. Every time the devil tells you something, you better start jumping and celebrate because he everything he's telling you is it's gonna happen completely the opposite. And the devil will never encourage you with good word. He will always tell you something to hold you back. So that means if he's telling you something to hold you back, that means he already senses that God has something greater for you, that it's not going to hold you back but push you forward, that's going to propel you to another level, and he want, he's trying to discourage you and to stop you. That's why you have to rejoice and celebrate. Say, devil, you a liar. You never told the truth once. Why should I believe you not? Why should I believe you now? Why should I believe you now? You never told the truth once. Millions of years that you've been around, you're always lying. You're the father of lies. And should I now believe that you're telling me the truth? Yeah, right. 
Right, devil. You came to the wrong house. You knocked on the wrong door. I don't believe you. Or you're a loser. You're a liar. You're a liar. Are you with me, church? Are you getting anything? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. You want to pray with me today? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you tonight. We praise you, Father, for your word. We praise you, Father, for the revelation knowledge that your spirit has given us. Oh, Father, we thank you that you are always ahead of the devil. When the devil is trying to plan something to come against us, you come and tell us through the revelation of your word and through your spirit so we can stand in your word and overcome every demonic attack. So I thank you, Father, that your people right now are the last group of this word, Father, in Mark chapter 4. The ones that are good grounds and are receiving the word and that will produce a harvest of 30, 60, and 100 fold. That's the kind of people that I'm speaking to right now, Lord. So I thank you for them. Because I can see harvest coming their way right now as we pray. I can see by the Spirit of God harvest knocking on their doors, in their bank accounts, in their mailboxes, in the name of Jesus, Father. Direct deposits come into their bank accounts in Jesus' name. I can see and I speak and I declare in faith right now in Jesus name I release my faith over your people right now and I agree with them every single one father that it's believing for healing right now I speak healing over your body migraine headaches back problems knee problems cancer diabetes I come against you right now in the name of Jesus Blood disease, heart disease. I come against you right now by the power of the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I command you right now to leave this body. In Jesus' name. I speak in the name of Jesus. Healing. 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 Over broken heart right now. A soul that's destroyed in pieces right now. I speak the joy of the Lord over you. And I declare that the joy of the Lord is your strength. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father. I bless your people right now. I bless your people right now. I speak victory over them right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, every single person under the sound of my voice, if there's a need right now, I'm in agreement for victory right now in Jesus' name. I'm in agreement for turnaround. I declare in the name of Jesus, every type of, 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 of abuse, hmm, it's destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Addictions, depression, I come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I feel the anointing all over my body right now. I know God is touching people right now. If God is touching you, if God is speaking to you, if you see difference, if you see results now or in the next few days, make sure you let us know. Make sure you let us know. Don't keep it for yourself. Let us know what God is doing in your life. Because I know prophetically God is speaking and touching people right now under the sound of my voice. Wherever you are, I'm in agreement with you. I see children, children, sons and daughters that haven't, haven't, haven't had relationship with their parents coming back home. Phone calls. Coming back in Jesus' name right now. I see things changing. Families being restored. Marriages being restored right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of fear right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of fear right now in Jesus' name. I speak the gift of faith and boldness and power over you right now in Jesus' name. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give God a praise right now, church. Let's give God a praise right now. Give God a praise right now. Give God a praise right now. 
Give God a praise right now. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, I speak tongues of fire over you right now. In Jesus' name, be baptized right now where you are by the fire in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I speak the joy of the Lord. Open your mouth and let the words, the, the, the words of the Spirit of God flow from your inner being through your mouth right now. Be baptized with the fire right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we close this broadcast right now, friends, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed. I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed in the kingdom of God, in the house of God. All the information is right there for you on the screen. And you can just sow a supernatural seed, a seed in faith in Jesus' name. You know what to do. I don't need to encourage you. You know the promises that are in the word. If you sow into the kingdom of God, if you give, God is going to give back to you. The only problem you're going to have is where to keep all the blessings. I told you. I told you that we have received testimonies of people that have given and money showing up in their accounts. Money showing up in their mailboxes. This is not one or two we have heard testimonies like that. We have experienced testimonies like that of supernatural provision coming from, from different sources. Three times, four times, five times more what they have given. Ten times more of what they have given in matter of days. In matter of days. So I encourage you today because God is faithful. God is faithful to make it come to pass in your life. I'm telling you, put God first this year. You put God first now in the beginning of the year. You won't have to lack. You won't have to worry about a thing. You're not going to be late in one of your bills. In fact, by the end of this year, come on, right now, listen to me. Listen to me because I'm releasing a prophetic word right now that just came in my spirit. Right now, write this date down in my words right now. That some people that are under the sound of my voice right here, by the end of this year, your mortgage is going to be paid off. Some other people are going to be completely 100% debt free. 100% debt free. This is a prophetic word. Write this down. Mark this date and mark my words. Mark my words. Some of you right here, people that are watching right now, I'm going to give you the time. 10 15, 10 15, 10 13 p.m., January 5, 2021. You mark my words. Mortgages are going to be paid off supernaturally. Supernaturally. Credit cards, debts will disappear. And you gonna have, you're going to have a supernatural increase in your finances that you're going to be completely debt free by the end of this year in Jesus' name. As the world is. The world is going the wrong direction. You're going to go another direction by the Spirit of God. I prophesy and I declare in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So all the information is there for you. You can tax to give A4321 and follow the steps or go to markedfaithfellowship.org and give it online and click on give online. And or and, and you can also give through, through, through mail. You can ch mail your checks to... P.O. Box 667, Matter 1, New Jersey, 07747. Amen. Were you blessed today? Are you blessed tonight? Night 2, day 2 of 21 days? Well, we're back tomorrow. We're back tomorrow for more. So tell your friends, invite your friends, tell them what God is doing. Keep sharing this. Keep sharing this. Also, this broadcast in about uh, 30, 40 minutes is also going to be on uh, on YouTube, so you can send the link to other people that don't have Facebook, so they can watch it as well. All right, and very soon, very soon, we will work in the details uh, to be able to do Facebook Live and YouTube at the same time. At the same time, so both accounts are going to be live in Jesus' name. All right, so we can reach more people, those that don't have a uh, Facebook account. We love you. I love you. We, we bless you in Jesus' name. I declare that you're marked by faith. You're marked by the Spirit of God for greatness. And your best year is right here, right now. We love you. I love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. And I'll see you.
tomorrow. Have a great night. Yeah.